Hello again, as we are setting up uh, the lab for the next live demo, we are just like to dive a little bit deeper again. Elm, you did already a great job, but let's discuss some multi-rod constructs and probably some nomenclatures which arise with the multi-rod reconstruction. Don't have any disclosures, unfortunately. Um, so the question, why do we need multi-rods? I mean, we did it many, many years just with a dual rod system, but what we learned even from biomechanical studies is that we have an increased biomechanical stability. We had less lumbosacral pseudarthrosis, increased fusion rates, and less rod breakage. Um, let me present just some cases of ours. Um, this is a construct, we call it bracket rod or spanning rod. Um, Dr. Chapman and Dr. Hart love those constructs, especially for one level um, osteotomies or PSOs or patients who had um, a non-fusion after multiple surgeries before. And the, the idea is behind is just to focus and to fix the level, like the main target area, and then do like a quadruct construct, which is which which it is actually, and then um, like do a quadrat to the pelvis, and then to focus on the on the rod uh, on the level of interest. So, um, and we already uh, discussed a little bit, like in terms of rod material, because we know this material um, confers different uh, mechanical properties. For example, cobalt chrome have a superior stiffness and fatigue life than titanium alloy rods. And um, <clears throat> this is why we like to combine titanium with cobalt chrome and, of course, um, the size of the rods uh, matter. This is a, another interesting case. This is a, a patient with a Charcot spine where we primarily do a quad rod construct. And this is a trend we, we see here in spine surgery that we, from the beginning, do a quad rod construct. We don't wait for revision surgery if we think there's a a big area to target, and if we think there is a high mechanical load, we start with a quadrat construct, and um, in a shark spine, we all know it's hard and difficult to treat, and in this patient, we did a quadrat construct, and even this quadrat construct failed. As you see here on the right side of this AP, something went wrong with the <clears throat> lumbosacral fixation, and we had also a cage dislocation. So, and what did we do then? We continued and uh, did a hex rod or hexa rod or six rod construct or whatever you want to call it um, to get this patient fixed. Um, in this far right image, you see um, he's wheelchair bound, but the construct seems to be stable at least for a couple weeks, which the patient is out. Um, yeah, so, and of course, we can continue to octa rod and whatever the trend will be the next years. So, and um, there, there's not much in the literature regarding multi-rod constructs. There are a few biomechanical studies and very few clinical studies. I'm just going to focus on like two or two, three main biomechanical studies and one um, very rele relevant uh, clinical study. And uh, the idea behind it has been um, published by Shen. <clears throat> In 2006, he was one of the first to describe the technique, um, and he could show in a biomechanical setting, co in comparison to a two-rod two construct in human cadaveric specimens, that he could reduce uh, flexibility and motion of the L5 as one segment significantly, and also axial rotation. Another study, which has been published by Wang in 2013, also showed similar results with greater stability and decreased range of motion at the lumbosacral junction, also in comparison to a two-rod construct. And the, the last biomechanical study, which also tries to compare a standard two-rod construct to a multiple-rod construct, which also includes a three-rod construct and a four-rod construct. And uh, <clears throat> this is uh, one of the few clinical studies. And, uh, this was a retrospective setting. They uh, did a matched cohort comparative analysis, and uh, they were targeting and focusing on the three-column osteotomy. And they could show in a clinical setting with a, with a two-year follow-up in every patient that they could see an increased stability uh, across the, the three-column osteotomy, and they just evaluated by 
X-ray and CT scan, and they really had significantly fewer rods broken and a less pseudothrosis rate. Uh, another interesting uh, construct which has been introduced by the group of Lenke um, in 2018 as a case report, other literature is not available, is the kickstand rod. It's a technique which has been introduced um, as a newer technique for correction of coronal imbalance in spine deformity patients. Um, and as we all know, coronal plane correction can be difficult to achieve and especially to maintain. Um, this is the, the, the case report and uh, just some technical nuances. Um, so the kickstand rod will be inserted on the side towards which the trunk had shifted. So this is this side, which is the left side. And usually a closed, closed domino implant should be inserted between the two screw heads at the thoracolumbar junction to fix the rod. And then uh, an iliac screw, uh, which serves as distal fixation point, which is usually 7.5 to 8.5 uh, AD millimeter screw, um, is placed into the iliac crest. So usually it's um, approximately four to five centimeter proximal to the PSAS, uh, where the ilium turns horizontally. And then you, you drill down a pathway down into the ilium. Uh, so, and this, this can, of course, serve as a third or fourth rod construct. So there's also a multi-rod construct in general. Um, and the rod should be cut slightly long to ac accommodate the distraction that is placed to lengthen the distance between the iliac wing and the thoracolumbar junction. And usually the distraction is, even the main focus is to apply the distraction between the thoracolumbar junction and the iliac wing. Another nice and interesting study where our colleague, uh, Dr. Hart, was involved too, um, has been published uh, by Polambo et al. in 2015, where they um, demonstrated an outtrigger rod. And I think this is the construct we also want to show in the lab later on. And the outtrigger rod is, um, the, the goal of the outtrigger rod is to enhance construct strength and stability. And especially useful when uh, spinal implants are exposed to a large magnitude of biomechanical forces, such as three column osteotomies or pseudothrosis after long constructs, or just to realign the spine in a multi level T lift procedure. But there, this was also just a two case report. Um, so, as you see and as you have heard, um, there's really a lack in literature regarding biomechanical. And of course, which is more important for us as clinicians, clinical studies. So, and um, it's not only used in adult deformity surgery, but also in pediatric surgery. And um, with this technique, uh, the su supplemental rod can be positioned either medial or lateral to the primary rod, depending on the on the surgeon and depending on the the situs, the anatomic characteristics of the spinal column. You can either insert it medially or laterally, so it depends on your choice. Um, this doesn't need to have the same length as the, the primary rods, but uh, <clears throat> it's, it's important um, that uh, these outrigger rods, or let's say the so-called outrigger rods, um, covers uh, the area where you think it's highly unstable, such as like the thoracolumbar junction or a PSO level, So stiffer rods, as according to the authors, they say that stiffer rods may not be required. We personally love the combination between a titanium and cobalt chrome rods, and some people use chrome uh, stainless steel, for example. So in conclusion, the, the things we know and um, we always try to teach others is that multi-rod constructs provide a higher mechanical stability. I hope you conclude with that. And uh, we have seen, at least in these few articles, that we had a reduced rate of lumbosacral pseudarthrosis at rod fracture, at least for two years. This was the longest follow-up. We have seen it's, of course, surgeon's choice, which diameter do you use? Do you use titanium, cobalt chrome, a mix of both? And of course, we need more clinical and biomechanical studies. Thank you very much.